Today we're going to be looking at Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive's MS Suspension Chassis. So yes, this is the newest suspension chassis from Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive. Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive is composed of a bunch of really cool guys, JP, Chris, Tim, and G. They create these awesome, awesome products including the MS Suspension Chassis and also one of their fluids, Spirit Bomb. Yeah, pretty cool. Spirit Bomb is a very special blend of lubrication oil and I used it during the Portal Tuners races and it worked out really well. So yeah, ask them about it. See if you can get some for yourself. Really, really good stuff. So let's take a closer look at this MS Suspension Chassis by Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive. Okay, so I have here on the left side my open class car and here is an open class car based on Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive's MS Suspension Chassis. So we both have MS Suspension Chassis here, except I decided to create mine using Chang Lu's MS Suspension Chassis. And this one here was created for me by Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive. And the first things that I noticed right off the bat, I weighed my two cars here, and it turns out that while this is about 124 grams all said and done, when I'm all said and done with this one, it came out to 111 grams. So what I've noticed right off the bat was the fact that what they've done with this chassis is they've basically stripped it down to its bare bone essentials. And what's really cool about this is this front pivot here, this design, is based on a singular pivoting point. So as you see here, everything's rotating on this one spring right here. And yeah, it's, it moves back and forth like you see. It goes tilting up, as you see. And the five degree angle that it exhibits is because of the two screws that are right here that are keeping it kind of afloat right here. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And because this is a single pivot point, you've got this one plate right here that everything is pivoting on and it's pretty solid, pretty, pretty solid. It's kind of ingenious actually, this whole idea of this single pivot point. Whereas the DXN AT front pivot, which is popularized in the Tamiya speed guide and such like that, you have a dual pivot and both these pivots have springs on them, which ultimately can lead to a lot of problems. So yeah, it's a little harder to move this around, right? So the pivoting action is not as smooth as Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive's pivoting system. It does tilt up and down and it stays in place because of screws lock, or lock nuts and these rubber bands right here. This is a very, very nice front pivoting system. And this right here, I had to create this little guy right here. It's, um, it's actually something that I purchased. And as you see here, it uses a popsicle stick and two, actually three popsicle sticks to create this cowl plate design. And you basically mount the cowl on top of this like so. So here, if I were to remove this part, you can see how Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive designed this. It's based on two plates that are attached by these screws right here, these two screws. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, everything that you see on this car, except for the rollers and the dampers, were included in the, in the chassis. Uh, so yeah, and you might have to get yourself a tail damper too. So yeah, basically what I'm reviewing is the chassis itself along with the design of all of the plates. So if I take a closer look at this, the wheels, tires, very nicely done. Yeah, and there's very little waggle right here. Very nice, very close to the body. Here we have the low fricks tires more towards the inside. 
I have one here that's more towards the inside and the front, but more towards the outside on the, on the rear. This really is more of a, a super hard in the rear than it is low fricks in the rear. And then you flip this around and you see the handiwork right here. Look at this. This whole compartment here is carved out and that makes it very easy to remove the batteries and it also allows the batteries to drop a little bit too so that's pretty cool whereas here the batteries don't drop as much and it's, it's a little stiffer this particular chassis right here although what they did do well here Chang Lu filed this down so that there's hardly anything here so it's it's a very nice flat clearance over here so here we have as braces we have these parts here these little mini plates here for braces we've got this so it's going to be very sturdy with these braces then and, and you see here it's very similar in design this front plate compared to mine here so yeah a lot of racers just leave this as an optional brake in case you need it in general if your car is stable and solid, you likely won't need this as much as your rear brake. So let's take a look at the rear brake because that, that's where like a lot of differences lie. Now I decided to make my own rear pivoting system using car catcher material so I don't need to use a mushroom cap on mine. So I've got a free floating pivot and there's a little spring inside and that's what's basically holding it together. The only negative about this is it leaves a lot to chance, right? Because if you're using car catcher material, you leave a lot to chance because this might not be entirely flat. You might not be able to get this as flat as you like. You might not be able to get your rollers as low as you like. And take a look at this. After repeated racing, this thing starts flipping up, right? So it's at an angle aiming downward now, and I have to basically adjust this so that it will lay flat again. So every few races, I have to basically pull this down and make sure it's landing flat. So, and by landing flat, I mean this here is perpendicular to the ground. So that's, that's what you chance by using car catcher material. If you used something more solid like plates, then you've got basically a guaranteed flatness, a guaranteed perpendicular post to the ground right here. And yeah, this has done very well. Like I said, as few things as needed to get the job done. I think that's, that's the, the great thing that I see here. And here we've got this one mushroom pivot that's smooth, right? It, you can go up, as you see here. You can go pivoting left and right. It's very, very simple, yet also complex too. And it just, it just does the job. And yeah, uh, I think this is, this might be, is this glued? No, it's not. It's attached with screws. Very smart because I attached certain things on my car with glue and that's how the front part like ended up snapping off because the glue wasn't strong enough. So if you want to use glue, that's great, but try to reinforce things with screws if you can. So yeah, so here we don't have some sort of a cover for the bottom screw. As you see here, the screw is exposed so it could potentially catch on the edge of a track. Here, it is, there's a plate that covers this up and it lends for a flatter surface. Now I could have done this a little bit better, I could have shaved this screw a little bit so that it would be flush and then there's guaranteed flatness. But this, uh, on several tests, this slides off of the edge of my box here like very easily. So I'm not too concerned about this not being, being entirely flat. So here we have nothing to guard this. There's no real underguard for this screw. So we could add an underguard, right? I could create a, another piece just like this and add it on here, and that'll do the job. So that's some things that I can do on my own to enhance this. But of course, it will then add a little bit of weight to the car. If you're looking for a total bare bones experience, like this 
This gives you the bare bones and it's super fast, lightweight. It's going to get the job done. So yeah, anything that you do beyond that point is like just up to you. All the enhancements that you do, it's up to you. So yeah, you can add another plate right here and just create like an underguard plate here and here and then you'll you'll protect that. You can also create a little underplate guard here as well and that'll protect this screw from snagging. But on my little mini tracks that I run at home, like it hasn't snagged yet. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, and I've attached this cowl on here with just one screw, but you should probably attach your cowls with two screws or adhere this whole thing onto this part here with tape. So yeah, and we can then place this right on top here and just place these little rubber pipes on top and we're good to go. Now, in the past I used to put springs like here because I didn't want this to be so free floating. But I've come to the realization that it's okay that it's free floating like this. Um, I, I, that's just my little OCD nature. But yeah, uh, here it's also free floating. See, but yeah, in the past I would just place a spring like on top here, like a half spring and just let it just bounce like that. And on the rear, I used to also do the same, right? So here, if you take a look, you can actually push this all the way down. And what I used to do is put springs right underneath these, these lock nuts here so that it would always point upward. But I've, like I've come to peace with all of, with this, with this type of design where it's just free floating like this, like it's fine as it is. It's, it's this flappy effect that you're trying to go for. And when you drop this, it just lands flat. It's, it's like pretty nice. So yeah, that's <laughs> even, even my car, my pro car, well, I don't have the batteries in there, but yeah, it, it lands reasonably flat, but not as flat as this one. But this is still pretty good. It did fare decently in the portal tuners race and it got to the qualifying round. But yeah, it would have been cool to race this one. I think this one would have fared really well on that track. Yeah, so yeah, like I said, all you need to do with this chassis is you get the chassis, you get these plates that are on the chassis, and then you just have to add your own damper weights and rollers and yeah, maybe a little rubber piping here and there and your own tail damper perhaps. But yeah, otherwise it's a complete product. Right out of the box, you can have something that's really cool. Just add your own cowl to it. Yeah, so, so yeah, it's, it's a great foundational product, this MS Suspension Chassis by Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive. And yeah, if you go onto their website and uh, here it is right here, you can see some of their products and you can talk to JP, Chris, Tim, or G and yeah, ask them about this suspension chassis that you saw here on this video. A big thank you to Precision Mini Four Wheel Drive for providing me with this MS suspension chassis and the Spirit Bomb lubrication oil. Yes, so everybody, if you like this video, please slam the like button, subscribe to my channel. You'll see more videos just like this one. Until next time, everybody, see you, bye.